Hi there, I'm Tom West. I'm Vice President with Make You Safe, and I'm really excited to be invited to EWTS by Brain Exchange and visit with you a little bit about workforce wearable technology and the implications of that for risk management, for industrial safety managers, um, how it's reducing workers' compensation claims, and some of the potential for advanced manufacturing and industry 4.0 applications. So some outcomes here or objectives for our talk today. We're going to look a little bit at how wearable technology really provides a unique means of gathering safety data, EHS data, while at the same time can, if done correctly, uh, respect employee privacy concerns. Uh, we're going to look at how machine learning and artificial intelligence are being used to identify high-risk safety trends and provide immediately actionable intelligence on hazards and risk. Uh, we're going to look at how safety and health management systems or the overall approach to management can be made more effective and more efficient and um, a little bit of a nuanced specific thing but in this time of a pandemic that we're all dealing with uh, we'll talk uh, briefly about how the burden of covid contact tracing can be lessened for organizations and managers and i'm going to share with you a variety of actual use cases from the field from a variety of industrial industrial environments really. So a little bit about who we are. Make You Safe is now about a five-year-old technology company that's based here in Des Moines, Iowa. And uh, really we're driven by and we're founded on this mission, this concept of making the world a safer place through technology and data and making sure that workers in industrial environments get to go home safely to their loved ones at the end of each day. We've created both hardware and software, the two halves of our solution. Uh, and you may see this armband that I'm wearing here. We're gonna talk a little bit about that. It's our product, it's our solution, but we're really in a space that hasn't existed before. So we're gonna talk a little bit about what we've learned in the last five years uh, in terms of our solution, what it does, how it solves a problem, and also look at the software side of this as well. Uh, as Gabe Glenn, our CEO, recently pointed out um, in a um, article for Smart Manufacturing Magazine, um, workforce wearables are probably the next evolution of workplace safety, kind of the 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 PPE, personal protective equipment of the future, if you will, um, and will probably become ubiquitous in uh, organizations uh, in the near future. In fact, a notable report on that subject, I believe from market to market came out in 2020, uh, predicts the workforce wearable space to grow to $9 billion by 2024. And that's a big reason why you are all here. So we're awfully happy that we're being equally well received in uh, safety circles, uh, as well as um, in workers' compensation insurer um, uh, theater, if you will. Uh, one of the benefits of being located here in Des Moines is that we may be the number one or number two insurance capital of the U.S., uh, depending on who you talk to. Uh, the other leader there is really Hartford. But uh, we've got an awful lot of insurer partners that work with us, so we have access to some data about claims, claims history, and uh, things from the insurer's point of view about reducing risk. So let me start here. Um, really, our company is founded on this basic philosophy, this approach that in every industrial environment, in every construction site, in every workplace, there are clues that exist to potential risks and hazards that workers face while doing their jobs. And what we've created is technology now that on the arm of the worker can gather data about what those workers are experiencing, what they're exposed to, and provide 
a predictive look at the type of incidents that may likely occur uh, before they actually happen. Uh, this can be a game changer, allowing safety managers and leadership of an organization to mitigate those risks before workers experience incidents and accidents. So our goal, I think collectively, would be to make sure to send workers home safely every day. But why should you care about what we're doing and about what wearables can do? Well, um, you know, five years ago when we started this company, I was battling with some of those same questions. How do we calculate ROI or how do we communicate the value of keeping nothing from happening? Um, now we've got actual data that shows uh, remarkably that as engagement with a wearable technology solution like ours increases, we're seeing evidence that claims frequency and the total number of claims can be reduced by half and claim severity may be reduced by as much as 90%. We're able to gather data in real time about hazards and risks uh, that was previously unknown. And that is important for understanding what's happening right now within my facility or on my site uh, and providing that to leadership so they can do something about it. But in addition to that, we're gathering data that over time allows for uh, a look back and study into uh, hazards and risks based on intelligence really that's never been available before. So we'll talk about that and I'll give you a couple of good examples. We're also seeing increased transparency, increased engagement and, and communication uh, streamlined between the front lines and supervisors. And I think all organizations realize that that is needed in order for them to compete. Uh, and we're looking at, at improving the effectiveness of safety and health management systems, uh, really making life easier for the safety managers that do a very difficult job already. So those are benefits that being realized are being realized right now. So let me paint a little picture for you about how our solution works. Again, you know, this is uh, innovative technology that hasn't been around for terribly long. So imagine, if you will, a worker walking into their facility, uh, walking into their job, and maybe right next to the time clock, the first thing they face is what we call our Make You Safe base station. It's really a kiosk uh, that hangs from the wall. There's a keypad on it. You might see some of them actually back there on the wall behind me. Uh, a worker simply enters on that keypad their unique identifier code, could be employee ID number, and that base station houses uh, 20 wearable core devices. Um, one of those bays will flash green, as you see in the photo here, and a worker simply removes that and inserts it into an armband worn holster uh, on their arm. I'm going to hold one up to the camera here so that you can see that core device is separate from the armband and maybe it's about the size of my thumb, about the size of a common matchbox. They simply put it into their armband and they can begin going about their day, doing their job. They don't really have to interact with the device at all. And passively, it begins collecting data from the environment around them that uh, allows for a better understanding of the hazards that they're um, being presented with, the exposures in the environment around them. Uh, and now data from that connected worker is transmitted in real time back to our base station. We call that our edge device. The base station is connected to the internet and it relays that data to our cloud computing platform, and then it shows up on any device, even a mobile smartphone, for safety leaders in our app that we call Make You Smart. So you're probably asking yourself, exactly what kind of data are we talking about here? What's being collected? And numerous sensors are labeled here on this 
model of our wearable device, but I kind of like to talk about this in terms of four general categories or types of data, if you will. Uh, and let's start with data about environmental conditions, which if you've ever been in an industrial environment or you can picture one, <laughs> are ever changing. Two workers may be experiencing dramatically different environmental exposures, uh, even though they might be just a few feet from one another, based on what side of a piece of heavy machinery they're standing on. So we're monitoring things from temperature and humidity, which can calculate the heat index for, for each worker, to um, noise level exposure, um, sound exposure. In accordance with OSHA guidelines, we're looking at sound in multiple octaves and we're calculating the time weighted average for each worker in real time. Uh, we're looking at things that may impact overall productivity or impact fatigue like light levels, no light levels or low light levels. Uh, we're also monitoring air quality and we'll talk a little bit more about those things but these factors are typically the realm of um, an industrial hygienist, a professional who studies these things. Um, now you could almost say that we've got an industrial hygienist on the arm of every worker. Uh, secondly, we're looking at potentially hazardous human motion in the top right hand corner. Uh, this is typically the realm of ergonomists. Uh, we're looking at detecting things like slips and trips and falls, which constitute uh, billions of dollars in workers compensation payouts every year. Uh, for those of you who may not be familiar with this, just stop and consider for a moment that the typical slip that requires time away from work, probably to go look at, you know, talk, look, visit a doctor and maybe get an x-ray taken because I injured my wrist, costs in excess of $46,000 per occurrence. That's mind blowing. The, the total workers' comp payouts annually in the U.S. alone, the last number I saw prior to COVID, were on the order of $63 billion a year. That's more than a billion dollars a week in the U.S. So in addition to slips and trips and falls, we're able to see the kinds of things like pushing and pulling and repetitive movement that contribute to... Um, exertions and strains. Um, individually, these are under, important in understanding what is happening to workers right now. But as I alluded to earlier, over time, we begin to get a picture of overall worker physicality. We can see who is working more physically than others doing the same job and those kinds of things. And I'll give you some examples. Third would be this spatial awareness component, in addition to identifying the location of where these indicators are being detected or gathered, uh, you could kind of envision like dropping a, a pin on a map, we're able to see where these things are happening and that paints a picture of trends and patterns throughout the day. If, you know, I had three slips in my loading dock area this morning, that's the kind of thing I want to be notified about. But we're also able to see what workers are close to and whose other wearable devices workers are within close proximity to. And I'll give you a couple of examples of this as we go on, but that leads to uh, contact tracing capabilities, which quite honestly wasn't even in my vocabulary a couple of years ago, as well as controlling or restricting access to certain areas of a facility or maybe locking out a machine that uh, some people don't have uh, credentials to be able to utilize. And last but not least, there's a button in the middle of the device that allows a worker to push it. They have to intentionally hold it down, but then they can speak into the device. A voice recorder is activated and they can record a voice memo of up to 15 seconds. And in the world of safety, there's an idea called near misses or good catches or observations from the front lines. And it's often been said that more near misreporting may be the holy grail of keeping people safe in industrial environments. Yet everybody agrees we don't hear about but a fraction of those things that actually are, are occurring to workers. So 
this idea of being able to push a button, not leave your work, not stop your productivity, or not have to remember to go to another building and fill out paperwork, but being able to report those near misses and good catches and observations uh, is breaking down communication barriers and resulting in a whole lot more things being known by leadership so that they can be fixed. I think it's also important to point out what we're not doing. So we're not collecting anything that's personal or biometric or HIPAA covered. We're not continuously tracking workers. We're not vibrating or setting off buzzers or whistles on their arm, giving them any feedback that could be more of a distraction and could create more of a hazard and probably would lead to people not wanting to wear a device on their arm for very long. So the other half of our solution is a software platform I mentioned we call Make You Smart. Uh, this is a static view, but it's where safety and risk intelligence shows up and becomes immediately actionable. And if nothing else, I'd like you to notice here that we've got things grouped in terms of highest priorities. And also there's an awful lot of large numbers and that's to draw your attention to things that you wanna go investigate or take action on now if you're a frontline safety leader. So the latest motion indicators, the latest environmental indicators, um, the latest voice memos, we've got some other tools in here for safety leaders, but also we're able to see trends. And that is when our artificial intelligence models um, are able to identify that there are correlations between data points that are occurring and maybe at a more rapid pace. So if we're able to see a particular location like the assembly room is experiencing high noise dosage, it has low light levels, and there's an increase in slips or trips there, that's the kind of thing that we can bring to the attention of safety managers. So a couple other notes and then we'll get into some case studies. Uh, our cloud platform was designed from the very beginning to not just take in data from our wearable devices, but really uh, take in data that provides context from any connected factory systems or equipment. Um, that uh, provides a, a, a more holistic, complete picture of what's happening in the environment and what workers are engaging with. Uh, equipment that they may be using. Uh, think of a fork truck. Uh, if somebody is on a forklift, a fork truck all day long, and that fork truck is enabled with uh, the ability to send data, we can now see data about the fork truck in addition to what the worker's experiencing. Um, you know, if, if we had an area that was accumulating condensation on the floor and there was an increase in slips there, we might be able to using Make You Smart automatically engage with the HVAC system and turn on air handlers to mitigate that risk before people get hurt. But Make You Smart really can be at the center of uh, much more than just safety. And that provides opportunity really to now integrate the connected worker into the fabric of what's going on in the facility. So factory systems and equipment may talk to our platform uh, and may exchange data um, with the wearable device or with our platforms to provide uh, a greater understanding for operations and facilities managers as well as safety managers. So I did allude to this earlier. We call this technology range view. We have the ability not just to see what's happening around that worker, but also now able to see when workers are in close proximity to one another, like in the top left. Um, some of you may know that there are states passing legislation that puts the burden on the employer for generating immediate notification if workers have been exposed. So if Bob comes into my office and says, you know, my wife was just diagnosed, um, I have to have the ability to pull a report that shows who Bob has worked around in the last 48 hours. Uh, we have that ability in our platform as well. Uh, and I might want to make sure that Jim in the bottom right corner is uh, checked out, is authorized to be able to work on that piece of, of equipment. And now they can talk to each other, they can exchange data. 
So here's a couple of examples from the, uh, from the field in our uh, deployments of Make You Safe. Um, and this is a terrific example. As this picture depicts, we've had um, work in facilities that uh, have workers in very close proximity with one another um, and all of those workers wearing the Make You Safe device. Um, two of those workers out of three never showed instances of high force motion, but one of them did. When we asked about that, uh, we were told by safety leadership, oh, that's just Victor. Victor's a little bit different. He does things kind of in a herky-jerky way. He's been here a long time, great guy, great results. But next visit, we were there, we asked to see Victor and watch what he was doing because we wanted to understand. And first of all, Victor was blown away that anybody cared enough to ask him what he was experiencing. But secondly, he said, I can explain that pretty easily. Um, I've got a nagging shoulder injury that I hadn't told anybody about. And uh, it starts to bother me, and that's probably what you're seeing. Then we asked, why does the data show it gets more dramatic later in the week? And he said, that's pretty easy, too. I go to the chiropractor on the weekend, so Monday and Tuesday, I'm usually feeling pretty good, but Wednesday it starts to hurt, and Thursday and Friday it gets much, much more severe. That safety leadership team walked away from that conversation saying, we've seen this before, and we're self-insured, and that kind of cumulative impact on the body has cost us in the past $170,000. So we're really grateful to know this. Another example, we've been at work in companies globally recognized names where we've deployed make you safe wearable technology in multiple sites within 60 days we were able to see at one site certain job roles were working 750 percent more physically than in the other three sites that provides an opportunity to ask a whole lot of great questions. How are they working? Are they working harder? Is everybody else working smarter? Uh, so it provided them with a good starting point for study to something they didn't know that existed. Um, Make You Safe has TVOCs, sensors on board, which are volatile organic compounds, anything that gives off fumes. We've had numerous examples where we've detected something different than even in-house monitoring systems have shown. And since we're using consensus of data from multiple wearables, even though they have inexpensive sensors, we're able to get a complete picture. And in some cases, an easy modification like turning on air handlers an hour early if, uh, mitigated a risk so workers didn't have to work in those environments. So we talked a little bit about voice recorded near misses. Pushing that button and leaving a message generates an immediate voice recorded MP4 file, excuse me, MP3 file of uh, the audio recording, which is playable even on a smartphone and a voice to text translation of that uh, voice memo for safety leaders. Here's one of my favorite examples right out of the gate uh, right after deployment with only a, a few minutes of training, a worker pushed the button and said, what we hear an awful lot, I've been meaning to tell somebody for an awfully long time. <laughs> they all start that way. And went on to say that there's a piece of our production line equipment that has an intermittent short in it. Safety leadership investigated right away and identified that that was an electrical shock hazard. In this case, there was a uh, an insurer involved and they happened to also carry the property insurance and when they took a look at the equipment and what uh, the failure was they found that that could have been a, a property fire resulting in a gigantic loss we are at work on construction sites we've had uh, workers fall from height which we wouldn't have been able to prevent but um, if you've ever been on a construction site workers are harnessed and tethered and uh, they can't hang there for very long we had a worker use the voice memo reporting feature to let supervisors know that they needed assistance in getting down before they were up there too long and here's um, one of, of two final examples um, you know sound exposure is an awfully big deal sound uh, hearing loss claims uh, our account for just incredible uh, amount of workers' compensation claims. 
Um, so we see all the time people using, you know, loud equipment and um, it provides an opportunity for safety leaders to make sure that they're wearing their required hearing protection. Sometimes when they're exceeding their daily allowable sound dosage in only the first a couple hours of their shift, it allows safety leadership or leadership of an organization to reevaluate hearing protection, make sure that it's adequate. We've even picked up examples of secondhand sound exposure or noise exposure. So a group of workers that's working in, in close proximity that doesn't have hearing protection was being subjected to a risk. And last example, we're at work in some pretty demanding places um, where work is very fast. Uh, there's a lot of focus on efficiency and productivity. Um, fortunately, we found outstanding customers and partners that realize that's not mutually exclusive with worker safety. Um, they're interconnected. Um, in the case of one partner, they're able to see and forecast that with a little bit of effort that is involved in deploying and managing Make You Safe as a solution, making sure that everybody is utilizing the wearable devices and that kind of thing, they're expecting a 50 to 60x return in terms of cost savings this year alone. So there is huge impact. Uh, and I only put this in to give you some idea if you're asking, that sounds great, Tom, but what might this cost? We're looking at tens of dollars per worker. That's our model. Um, we're on par with the cost of a decent pair of work gloves. So thank you. Um, there are some resources here available to you, a free download on our website. Uh, more use cases like those I've shared on our, on our site as well. Uh, and my contact information is available here. Our staff is manning our virtual booth, and we would absolutely love to connect with you and answer any further questions you might have there. Uh, I will be available as well, and would love to hear from you your thoughts about our wearables, uh, how they might be utilized, uh, and answer any questions you may have. So thanks for EWTS for inviting us to this year's conference.